to here, some don't. But anyway, it's a touch and what you get, get back. In this case, it's the sound of percussion. So again, on top of all this here, they add that to it. So no, back then, no other organ would do that other than the, the hammer. So it gave the musicians another sound. This one came, I'm not sure when it came to be, but this is. Ooh. That is what now we call, or I call anyway, and a lot of people do, I guess, is wow. I you think there's wow. another, I think in some cases it's called a bend. Yeah, you're bending the sound, yeah. okay. On my organ at home, I've got a little thing down here. I just hit it with yeah, my foot. Yeah. On most of the electronic synthesizers now, they have a wheel. Yeah. You bend, you bend it. One of my organs had a, a knee lever. Yeah. Your guitar players use that all the time. Yeah. With their, their feet. They have 10 pedals. Yeah. Yeah. Give you all those sounds. So. Anyway, um, as I said, the, I had a Leslie speaker that plugged in the back there, so. We've gone through, this is 19, late 40s, Four, late 30s, 40, 50, 60, then rock and roll came with Elvis Presley. And the organ stayed around for a while, but basically they're almost non existent now. But they're still making them. Well, they Which is interesting, them a lot in interesting enough, the Japanese made this. This is not your Hammond organ board. I live, I live near Chicago. We had several Wurlitzer Company from, from Illinois, big Wurlitzer organs, Hammond was from that area, and Hammond, Indiana, Illinois, and so on. So there was a lot of music companies came out of that area for 20, 30, 40 years. It died. They're all, they're all gone. The Japanese are now making the Wurlitzer organs. They're now uh, taking over the Hammond. have grown up through this, okay, one word or the other. This is Hammond 19, let's say 39. And then in 1986 came the next big thing in music called MIDI. MIDI is computerized music. So your electronics and your computer is going to put out all of this. So if you look down here, these are called DIN plug, D-I-N. So now we have many DIN, but these are record DIN, D-I-N plugs. Okay? So that's a certain kind of plug. So for MIDI music, for example, if I wanted to make this into a real Hammond organ, I'd have two of these, one sitting above it. And then I'd have a foot pedal. I do have a foot pedal at home, but I didn't bring it. But then I could get a real Hammond sound out of this system. You have a MIDI in and a MIDI out and a MIDI through. So if I want the lower keyboard and the foot pedal, I don't want it to go play through this thing. Some of these, this one doesn't have a speaker built in. Well, almost anyone you buy now does. Pianos and court included. You want to go through. So I just got a speaker here. I don't want it playing here. I want it playing through that speaker. I want all those sounds to come out of the same speaker. So this would be out. 
and in some of them I might want it going in or I might want it go in and out. So if I put the other one here and went through, it would go into here and out the bottom. It would not play here. Does that make sense? So you have MIDI in, MIDI out, and a MIDI through. For this one to play, it's got to come out. Okay? But this is audio out. This is going to have to come through a MIDI synthesizer, a MIDI device that makes music not a speaker. And then the MIDI device will send it to a speaker. Do, uh, do the keyboards, modern keyboards, have the through? No. Because I had never run into that. Pardon? I, I hadn't noticed them. I've got two different no, keyboards. No, because most keyboards are, are not made professional. If you get in a professional world and they're using MIDI, Okay. More than likely, so uh, again, these are not in the range of a hundred dollar, you know, like my oh, Yamaha. No. Either they're not a hundred and fifty dollars. You know, we're talking pretty big bucks. For, or my my camel, I have a camel. You know, can't remember what you're trying to do now. But anyway, it's like this. And they're big and they're heavy. They're they're not yeah. the toy market or whatever you want to call it. It's not for the kids. It's not for the hobby people like us, these are made for the professionals. Yeah. So, but the true concept is still there. Now, where this serves a musician, the MIDI music concept, for example, when I was in San Antonio, uh, I'd go down in the river walk on a, on a summer night, and you go down there and eat, or you go down to a cocktail lounge or whatever, there'd be musicians playing all over the place. Mariachi music, uh, jazz, Dixieland, you name it. But San Antonio's got a lot of music like New Orleans. So if you go down to the river walk, for example, I used to go down and just sit there. Didn't want to go to bed yet. So I'd sit there and listen to a musician. This musician was there. He played guitar and he sang country western style. I really liked it. It was good. So anyway, I decided to hire him. And he says, what well, do you want my band? And I said, I didn't even know you had a band. And he says, yeah, I do. So then he showed me his system. And I showed you that in the past. Maybe I'll bring it next week and show it to you. He had a mixer for sounds. So he'd push a button and get a trumpet. He'd push a button and get a clarinet. And he'd push a button. And so anytime he got rid of them. So when I went to hire him, he had a real trumpet player. And he had a real clarinet player. So obviously, he had a band, but when people couldn't afford the band, yeah. he could come down and still have the same sound yeah. with electric music. So he's the first one. Now, we're talking about late 1990s now, that I saw a musician that made lots of money using these principles. Okay, you got to go to? Yeah, I want to get you. Okay, anyway, we'll wind up there. See so a couple questions? Of what? Here's the old type of plug. You see that? We're not off the plug. The plug in the left is fixing it. And it's got something like 16 little plugs. So now they got down to most plugs and one, two, or three. So right, left, and right, left to get them out. And in fact, here they have that plug. The principle on sound is, if it's if they follow the standard, right channel is right and left. Left channel is left, okay? And then you get stereo out. So I got someone to take Helen's face and she's still playing. If you've got an RCA plug, if you got an RCA plug that's red and then white and then yellow for video. You plug the right in, you're going to get right and left. Plug the left in, you're only going to get left. Well, there, there may be a reason to do that. If you're making teaching tape, for example, like I made lots of them uh, down in for Central and South America, I would make a video in English and then another video in Spanish. So on these older machines or however, you can flip that channel. You can flip the 
playing here on channel white or channel up, be English or Spanish. Or in music, you could have two people harmonize. So you could use it for uh, different reasons, a concept of, of stereo. But you only had two of them, right and left. So, but you have to remember that right or red is plays both of them. So a lot of people who are recording stuff and making DVDs on their own or CDs or whatever, sometimes they don't understand that. And they don't understand that if it's in the music program, they have to make sure that they're getting both right and left channels. Because if you take it, for example, and you give it to me, we're at a festival somewhere. Lots of people come to hear music and dance. And you give me your CD, we plug it in, and nothing comes out. That means they use the left channel, probably. Okay. And you can't play it unless I can do some manipulation to make sure I got left channel separate from right channel. If I only had one wire going out, the red going in, and a lot of times there are different reasons to connect things different, their music is not going to go through the system. So it can be good or bad. It can add to the dynamics of what you're doing, or it can cause Murphy's Law to kick in. All these kids already get on stage and dance, and they hand it to the sound man, he pushes the button, no sound. Everybody frantics, panic. What happened? Sometimes they can solve it. So again, once we get to, that's what we're talking here, to the level where anybody can make their own CD with a PC, that doesn't mean that they know what we're going to go through this month, how to use microphones, how to use recording, how to make, make it compatible with equipment. It gets pretty complicated. Any questions yet? Jim's one, he gives me CDs, you know, so, so far they all work, so. So far they work? Well, but yeah, all the ones that you give me, you know, have worked. But I'm saying, I've met people who, they give me one and it doesn't work, you know, and then I go back, well, I don't know what I did. I said, well, you better go back and do it again or find out. So, sometimes it's just a matter of clicking a button. And one of the things we'll go over is how to do this, how to make music on a computer third or fourth class. You have to make sure that you click the right buttons. You might have a button that says mute, no sound, nothing's going to come out, nothing's going to be recorded, whatever. You may have one that you turn the volume way up or here, and that's where what you know about computers kicks in for sound. We're going to talk about MIDI music and ASCII. So if you want to read up on anything, read what ASCII code is here over 127, uh, and then how that applies to, to MIDI code. Okay. You happy?